Hey there folks, we're back at the home shop. Somebody brought this over to me. This is gas powered uh, toenail trimmer. If you're going to do this on the bench, first thing you want to do is take the belt off, obviously. Alright, now if it starts, that ain't going to start swinging. Now he said he can't get it started, it's been sitting for a couple years. I'm going to just gather, take a wild stab here. Oh Jesus. Woo! Yep, pretty sure that's what's going on. Pesta! Oh, my eyes are burning. Just to verify, we're going to do one quick check. Uh, easiest way to check the uh, integrity of the engine and the ignition system is to just shoot it with a little carburetor cleaner. If it pops on spray and it won't run on its own, you know what the problem is. The wetter the better, right? Okay, we got a nice crisp blue spark. Plugs wet. Didn't even pop. Next, all you really got left is compression, so let's see what happens here. Not very scientific, but it's got some, so I'm going to put a little compression checker in there. Now, Briggs & Stratton does not report their uh, specs for compression because, uh, well, there's a compression release. It's kind of a long story, but you rotate the flywheel backwards and basically do bounce tests to see if it's got an adequate amount of compression um, for a rule of thumb though it's always going to be at least 100 110 115 125 something like that you got good compression there if it's around 60 70 80 something's wrong this thing being as old as it is um, might just need to soak the cylinder down a little bit with some engine oil kind of maybe the rings are stuck um, get it freed up a little bit soften that thing up I'm going to start with some carburetor cleaner though see if this will Degunk it. We'll go see what happens after a six pack. All right, we got some carburetor cleaner down in there. Also, you got stuck rings. Sometimes, if you just soak the cylinder down, a little bit of brake fluid, this will kind of penetrate the uh, carbon. And the ring deposits get them to snap back out so just fill that up and uh, give it a little while a couple hours maybe all right well it's the next day the cylinder sat all night soaking down we'll put this rag over here see if there's anything that comes out might have drained all then in, down into the crankcase yeah sure did so let's see if it's any better I don't know. It's not very scientific. Give her a little squirt. See if she pops. promising shit all right I'm gonna get a compression checker from the shop Let's see what this actually is attention tri metro region you are about to receive an important message. Please stand by. 
My name is Lou Fernandez and I'm a real doll repairman. If you own a real doll and it's been damaged due to abuse of any type, I can fix it. Man type, woman type, I can fix it. Most real doll repairmen are racists. Not me. Asian? Black? Asian? Cowgirl? Indian? It doesn't matter. I'll fix anything. Ripped a nip? Busted a labia or lip? Socked an eye at the eye socket. I got top honors in repairing all that shit. I don't judge, I just fix. Blew out your pussy. Bent your dong. Tore it a new asshole. Literally, not a problem. I can fix it. There's no need to send your friend around the world for costly repairs. I'll come to your boudoir and fix your real doll's minor problems in your home. But let's say you go bananas on your sex doll and you do something serious that needs some serious repairs. I can come to your house in my real doll ambulance and take her to the only real doll trauma ward in the tri-metro region. I'm here for you. You will not hear this guarantee for another real doll repairman. I will not have sex with your real doll more than is necessary to ensure that the repairs are solid. Okay, ran down to La Casa de Grisa, got my compression tester. It's nice working a block away sometimes basically anything over 75 is gonna do it hundreds better well mystery solved 50 psi that ain't shit I'm gonna have to tear her down see what's what might have to adjust the valves do a valve job on it could have a blown head gasket but I probably hear that and it's also possible that the cylinder is pretty much screwed, but uh, I doubt it with the amount of hours on this thing. It's not that old. It's a 93. These types of things usually get a couple hours on them a year. I'll bet it's in the valve train. Let's see what this guy wants to spend. Okay, this is the intake stroke. So, intake stroke, get it? Piston comes down. Intake valve closes. Piston comes up. Compression stroke. Right about here is when it blasts. So, that's how you want to check these valves. See if any of them are turning. Mm. Nope. Here's another trick. You don't want to take it apart to check the valve clearance. Get it a top dead center compression stroke. Then take a pair of pliers. See if you can turn the valve that way. See how loose it is. And it's pretty loose. Alright, I would say that that intake valve is not seating. Again, top dead center compression stroke. Should be full spring pressure on this valve. And uh, I don't know if this camera's doing it any justice, but it does not seat very well. So I might have to pull this apart. I'm going to see if I can sneak in there, though, and uh, clean that carbon off. But I do think I'm going to have to grind the end. Oh, yeah. This one's looser than a $2 whore on Nickel Knight, too. I'm probably going to have to pull these valves, grind the stems, get a little bit more compression in this thing before it'll run.